Uh, good afternoon, everybody, and welcome back to the Travel Perspective sessions at uh, World Travel Market. Now, um, I, I missed the news last night. Uh, did anything important happen? No? <laughs> well, I, I, I did see that um, California had uh, legalized marijuana, so maybe that was the big story. But uh, um, uh, yeah, obviously, we have a new president of the United States. Um, and in interestingly, I don't know if those two are related either, but um, interestingly, um, politics was where we first started talking with, um, with my guests uh, here today. Um, I'm very happy to be joined uh, by uh, Merrill Levitt, who's the president and CEO, and uh, Paula Butler, who's uh, vice president of communications for Visit Philly, for Philadelphia. Um, we, we started talking about uh, politics because of what uh, the tourism department there is doing with uh, Snapchat, which I thought was really, really interesting. And I thought it'd be really good to, to share it with everybody here, find out what they're doing. They're, they're real uh, world leaders, I think, in, in using social media in tourism. Uh, so I'd like to, to invite you to, to come to the stage and share exactly what you're doing. So round of applause, please. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mark, and thank you for everyone for coming here. And uh, yes, we believe in what the Brits said in 1939, keep calm and carry on. So that's what we're going to do. Paula asked me to set the stage a little bit for why we were such early adapters of social media and why we use it so much. So a few words about Visit Philadelphia. It's our name and it's our mission. We're the region's official tourism marketing agency, and that means Philadelphia and the countryside, four surrounding counties. And our goals, our mission is to do three things, boost the image, drive visitation, and boost the economy. We were formed in 1996 as an economic development agency to replace the lost manufacturing jobs in the region. People thought hospitality might be able to do that. We're not a membership organization, we're not a sales organization. The five CVBs we work with handle the sales and the membership services. Fortunately, we came of age just when everything was switching to virtual, digital, social, and we quickly realized the value of that for us. We were one of the first DMOs to have a destination website and that was good because Philadelphia at the time was not first to market, it was last to market. It had a very small budget, it had big competition with names like New York, Boston, and DC. It had no real brand except for a fuzzy one, which is sometimes harder to push against. It's like pushing against a wet noodle, kind of. And in some cases, it had a negative brand. So the advent of digital and social media given all of that, seemed to us to be a boon. We had no share of leisure business at the time. Philadelphia was not seen as a place where people would choose to come. Philadelphia and fun did not appear in the same sentence very often. Only about 12% of our room nights were occupied by leisure, and that was only on some weekends and some months. That's no longer true. We've been able to triple leisure we had 41 million visitors last year. Some of you may remember a futurist named Richard Nesbitt who predicted some time ago that the higher tech we got, the higher touch we would need to become. And that has proved to be true. We need to be closer and closer to the customer all the time. And that's why social media is so good. Now that they have so many channels, though, it's also why social media is so hard. We have 55 people in our organization. 12 are specifically content producers, specifically. We divide our marketing into paid, owned, and earned media. From day one, we created content because, as I said, nobody thought of Philadelphia's leisure. So there were no photographs on Philadelphia that were, usual, that were usable and emotive. There was no video. There were not even words that would capture what Philadelphia is. So the company is divided that way around several travel motivators that we found the strongest and that fortunately are well adapted by social media. 
These destination attributes include a fun atmosphere, which we have to work at all the time because the image was stodgy, a vibrant dining scene, people thought it began and ended with cheesesteaks and pretzels, walkability, people didn't understand how charming the streets were, laid out by William Penn from London, local neighborhoods to explore, vibrant social scene, vibrant art scene, and key words like local festivals and events. We're now able to talk about Philadelphia in a legendary way, as in there's more to a legendary city than its legends. But we present all with love, XOXO. We can never get far away from our original brand, which is actually the name of our city, Philadelphia, which is city of brotherly love, and we always add and sisterly affection. This brand is strong enough and big enough that it can be used in many ways. And here are some shots that show you the kinds of things that we're able to say now that people know we can get past what they think they know. Paula will talk about the content and messaging implications of this, but I just want to show everybody this is the basic block that we use through digital, social, and everything else. This is how we use it when we're doing online and outdoor billboards. The call to action, of course, is the website. We try to inject humor, worth, and love with everything that we do. So commute for work, travel for fun, visit philly.com. And we also give permission for people to love us. A bar crawl counts as sightseeing. We want them to know this. So humor, warmth, love, legendary. Here's the legendary Paula Butler to take us specifically through our uses. Thanks so much. Thanks so much, Marilyn. Good morning, everyone, or afternoon. Um, I manage the social media team in communications, and uh, here they are. I can't. Okay, here they are. Um, the team is on the left, um, and our extended family is on the right. And the reason I, I included this picture is because our family really is our friends and family are, that follow us on all our channels. Um, and they come to meetups, we do Snapchat meetups with them, and I'll tell you a little bit more about that in a few minutes. But we consider them part of the family. We also consider part of our social media, and a, and a major, major part of that, our website team. Uh, it's visitphilly.com and youwishyouknew.com. And those two websites um, have a combined uh, unique viewership of 19 million last year and it's growing all the time, and that is the place where we link back to, so all our social media has a home, and where we, what we talk about and all our content links back, and the content producers that Meryl told you about that are doing the words, the pictures, the video every day, and the visuals are becoming more and more important every day, as you know if you're in this space. Um, we have 1.2 million fans and followers across 15 channels in our social media right now, and we divide our social media uh, strategy into three parts, before they visit, during the visit, and after. And we really feel that they're equally important all the way around, and we use the channels differently based on this. For example, uh, for content distribution before they visit, we use Facebook and Twitter, but then for image building, we use Instagram, Pinterest, and Tumblr, and for establishing personality, the, new, the advent of more and more um, video channels and live streaming opportunities really help us get the word out. Here's some examples of our Instagram feed. Uh, all the Instagram photos are, are user-generated content, and we have someone whose responsibility, one of those team members, to um, talk to, be in a dialogue with these people posting photos. And we also have a very active guest Instagrammer program. Um, hundreds of people so far have taken one week. We basically give them the keys to our Instagram account. We have meetups with them regularly so we can keep up with them. They're influencers, mostly based in Philadelphia, who really have a lot of followers, and that's how we grow our Instagram account. Here are some examples of those photos that we just think are beautiful, and everyone's so creative, and they want to share their, their photos, so we want to work with them. Here's some others. 
we found skylines really, really work. You know, I know a lot of people take close-in pictures of, of food and everything, but the lights, um, the more sky, the skylines get so many likes, like this one with a, a 5500. Um, this is our art museum, and uh, this is Rittenhouse Square with uh, 5,000 likes. So really, um, these visual images, and they're all user generated. So Periscope is another thing we do, the live streaming video. Um, and we repurpose the Periscope videos, because even though they disappear in 24 hours, we can post the videos, we save them, post them to um, Facebook and Twitter, and we get extra use that way from them. And it's a way to preview what's going on. So I just want to tell you an example that just happened. One of our countryside towns um, does, called it's a Peddler's Village, it's a, it's a destination in Bucks County, and they do uh, an apple festival every year, and it's a weekend festival. So basically, if we were to cover that with live video on Periscope or uh, Snapchat, the first day, it's only a two-day festival. So we would have to, people, by the time they see it and actually go, they might miss it. So we work with the organizers of events to set up a preview for us. So they, they set up a whole table this week um, with all the things you could do during the Apple Festival, and we did an, a live uh, Periscope video with them. And it was a great way because then people would have the whole weekend to actually go. So the whole idea is to preview to get them to actually do things. Um, very interesting pre-visit learnings. I mean, you can you see this on your channels, I'm sure. Uh, last year, in October 2015, I don't know if you can all see this, the red, sorry, it's red and blue. Um, but in October of 2015, our uh, organic reach was um, 9 million just organically for the same post. Um, and then by this month, by September, you can see our paid reach had gone down. And that's because Facebook is actually, um, you know, the, their algorithm changes every day, I think. And uh, now our paid posts have to boost it. So now we reached in September 6 million people. But you can see how much of it was paid. So it's necessary, it's just something we have to do. This is another thing we started very recently, the, the, the um, Facebook pixel that you can embed into your website. And this pixel enables us to custom target very closely uh, who we want on Facebook. So for example, we have a winter promotion that started last week. Um, it, it, includes two, it includes one night, free parking, um, um, a dinosaur exhibition at the Franklin Institute, you know, and, and a couple other perks. And the, um, we were able to target through the Facebook pixel anybody who had been to our website, who had visited in November, December, January, February, during the time of the promotion, and uh, who was interested in dinosaurs. I mean, you can really target very, very uh, finely. So it's, it's been really great for us, and we continue to use it. So during the visit, we used three different strategies, surprise and delight, photo spots, and the live video. And I'll have examples of each one. So here's an example of surprise and delight. So what we do is we monitor our feeds all the time. And when someone says they're in Philadelphia and they're having a good time, or they have a question like, I need a restaurant near, um, near the Academy of Music, say, for example, we'll reach out to them and give them suggestions. And we'll interact with them publicly online. But then um, if they seem like they really want to engage with us, we'll take, the, we'll take the conversation offline, find out a little more about what they like to do. And we have a whole storeroom filled with fun things, promotional items and fun things we think they would like. And we make deliveries to their hotel, um, all, hotels all over Philly. And you can see some of the things they say. It just gives us deeper conversations with our, with our visitors. Um, and here's another version. We were interacting with somebody, and she was talking about the Reading Terminal Market, which is so much fun. And they just love, they just love interacting with us. Here's, um, here's an example of photo spots. So what we decided to do, our brand, as Meryl said, is with love, XOXO. And we know everybody likes to take pictures all over, t all over town. And we wanted them to use our hashtag, Visit Philly, and hopefully get closer to us um, and our website. So we used our brand. Um, we, want, we shared, uh, we, we installed a whole variety of uh, photo spots, different kinds of them. And I think they have a video back there they're going to show right now that tells you the story.
and they're still going. And we think our, we think our branding is very relevant today and always. Um, there's another, we started doing meetups right before the DNC, the Democratic National Convention um, in Philadelphia. We started uh, working on Periscope and we started you know, doing live videos, uh, meetups, because we knew with 40,000 visitors and 15,000 media, people would be all over town sharing. So what we decided to do was do start this whole, start, get into Snapchat in a big way. Um, we, have a, we have several hosts at Visit Philly. Anybody who follows us can see that we have a lot of, you know, at Visit Philly have hosts for, for Snapchat. And basically what we started doing is meetups with our fans and followers. So we first did a very underground thing around um, the, uh, here's one for Harry Potter, I'll just show you that. But Harry Potter Festival gets 40,000 visitors um, to the festival that happened, I think, two weeks ago. And we did a meet up there. And we also have another video here. Did you guys hear? Tomorrow in Chestnut Hill is the Harry Potter Festival, and we're gearing up with Dumbledore and Harry. Expecto a good time! You know, it's so what corny, are you guys right? waiting for? Callisto! So gear up and meet us tomorrow at the festival because we're giving away these, this, and this awesome hat. See you for the magic. Hey guys, we're about to board the Hogwarts Express. We're heading to Harry Potter Festival. We cannot wait, we're so excited. That's Dustin, one of our Snapchat hosts. He wasn't using our own geo filters, which he should have done, probably. Um, we put them up for special events. We put them up at the DNC. We put them up for several days at a time, sometimes when there's an event that goes over the weekend. And we're seeing the use of those geo filters very, very much. And Mark did a great little story. Thank you so much on that. Um, so dur during the visit learnings we've had um, is that user-generated content, we really think, when people say, what's next? In Social. We really think that's it. Um, using, you know, using uh, the fans and followers and what they're inclined to do, put, make them part of our story, and using the beautiful work that they're creating every day. Um, tell stories through live video, which I think is going to increase as more platforms get on video, and redefine and prioritize the influencer. And what we mean by that is that in the beginning, I'd say a year ago, we were just going after influencers that had millions of fans and followers, and we thought they would be very influential, but what we're finding now is that those influencers are great, but people are kind of skeptical with that, because they, they kind of, they're kind of feeling very like advertising, and that they're paid, uh, paid things. So we, we feel that finding a, an influencer who loves Philadelphia, whether they're residents or visitors, um, maybe have 300 fans and close friends and family that follow them, is, is really pretty great. Um, so, also, I just wanted to say another thing about our visitors is about 47% of them are visiting friends and relatives. So we feel that our, our residents of Philadelphia are high priority targets for our message and for helping us be better, be better hosts when people visit. Here's an example of a Facebook comment. I just wanted to reach out to say thank you. It's a time, type of representation the city needs. And He's saying, um, you know, my daughter was so happy to see herself on Snapchat. I think, you know, this is the way, this is the way of the future of actually meeting our, meeting our guests face to face. And for post visit, um, this is our opportunity to really say thank you, um, to be personal, to be real time, to express gratitude for their visit. Here's an example again at the photo spots um, of someone, you know, saying how much they loved it and us thanking them and asking them to come back soon. And some of our learnings, um, we've had through all those uh, photo opportunities, 310,000 uses of our hashtag. And basically, it's about 450 a day. Um, on a really beautiful day, we can get 800 uses of our hashtag a day. Um, so we think, that's, we think that's awesome. And here's some examples of those pictures. 
We also survey. We think this is really important because even though we know clicks, we know likes, we know comments, and we have lots of metrics to measure those things, we do a survey once a year uh, of people that have come to our 15 channels, and we ask them, did, you, did we inspire you to visit? And 87% of them said we did. And then we ask, how, much, how many of you actually did something that we said to do? And 76% say they did. So um, we think that's really, really good, and we will continue to grow that. We get similar numbers, actually a little higher, from our web survey. Uh, Visit Philly also does surveys, and you wish you knew, of just to see how much we're converting, because that's really the name of the game. And um, I wanted to say that our social team is at home. It's very early uh, in Philadelphia, but they're there monitoring Twitter. If you have questions that we can't answer, they're at Visit Philly. You can tweet them anything, and they can answer. They're really the experts. They're there, they're there doing this day and night. And actually, I think they're out every single night of the week at events to preview for visitors. So uh, they work really hard, and they're a great team. Um, and I don't know if you want to go to questions. We have some extra time. Yeah. Um, well, thank you for, for that, Paula. How, yep. how many people found that uh, inspirational there? I mean, it's an incredible use of, uh, of all of the different platforms that are out there on social media. It, uh, show of hands, people like that? Yeah, incredible. So um, I'm sure you'll have a lot of questions. I have a few, but uh, I'd prefer it if you ask those questions. Uh, we're using Slido uh, within the WTM London app. If you haven't got that, please download it from the Play Store or the App Store. Uh, you can see, hopefully on screen, um, the, some of the questions have already been asked. All you need to do is click on the, the session title, and you can ask something either with your name or uh, anonymously as well. Um, so thanks for, for those questions. Um, Alex has a question. You talked about boosting Philly's leisure tourism. Has it actually worked? I'm sorry. The top oh, question. leisure tourism. Yeah. Yes, um, Meryl can answer that too, but um, we have basically gone, uh, we're, we, have for, uh, we had record visitation last year and record hotel occupancy, which is another major, um, major metric that we use. Uh, last year we had in 2015 41 million visitors, and I think when we started uh, in 1997 it was something like 17 million. So we have really moved the needle, and it goes up every year. And not only that, but our room rates are going up every year. Um, and leisure tourism is the booster. Um, it used to be that business travel and convention were really driving most of our business. Um, and now it's equal. It's a third, a third, and a third. A third leisure, a third business, and a third convention and meeting. And that's really healthy for any destination, I think, to have that kind of balance. I was thinking maybe you could take a seat, actually, so you're more comfortable in this uh, uh, section. Um, how do you measure success? I don't know. Maybe that's a question for, for you, Meryl. I mean, do, do you, um, you know, have KPIs on number of followers, or is it about converting to, to website visits, or is it in uh, room nights in the city? Mm -hmm. I just want to add first to something that Paula said. Because of the makeup of Philadelphia, everybody has some kind of connection to Philadelphia. And because of the lack of confidence that many Philadelphians seem to feel about talking about their city in a positive, come on down and visit way, we focused on a strategy that we call concentrate and radiate. So really, our first campaigns, and the reason so much of the social media activity is centered around residents, is because you have to concentrate your resources, get people to believe, and because 47% are coming to visit them, we don't want them all sitting around the kitchen table in the morning saying, well, what do you want to do? I don't know, what do you want to do? We want them to be able to have the resources to say, I saw this great thing that I want to do. So one of the measures that we do use is attendance at many of our legendary destinations, as well as the um, shops, the restaurants, the boutiques, the artist studios that we're doing. We use Longwoods International. We use Tourism Economics. We use a number of, it seems like every Tuesday, we get another five or six vendors who says they can tell us everything about measurement tracking and, and conversion. Because we're funded in great part by the hotel tax, we of course look at overnight visitation 
and work with them on the room night build and the market mix. And uh, we also felt, I should say, from the very beginning that the budget that we had from the hotel tax, since we don't have that many hotel rooms um, compared to many of you, was not going to be enough to be competitive with New York, Boston, DC, even Williamsburg. And of course, more destinations are coming on board every day. So we make a big effort, and that's a big part of my job, to go and raise a lot of money um, to boost the, the budget so that we can go into um, areas like this, which are pretty cost efficient when you think about it. Not necessarily staff efficient, um, but cost efficient, although more and more we have to pay for all the time. So you want to continue? No, I, I think yeah, that's right. I'm looking mm -hmm. at all these questions, and I don't know how oh, you want to. Oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah so, how um, do you want to? We'll take one from uh, the top one here. What, what are the most successful in-house content and owned media campaigns that have overperformed? And why would you do this in-house rather than engaging an agency to do it on your behalf? Well, Meryl, who is the founder um, of was Greater Philadelphia Tourism Marketing Corporation, now Visit Philadelphia. Actually, the decision was made, and I was there early, early on, to have an in-house staff. We felt that the job was so big and so constant um, that we really needed in-house talent to do most of what we do. We, we do have agencies for advertising, um, and some, like in Canada, we have an agency. But for the most part, this, and, and the more we do with the social space, it is, a, it is literally a 24-7 job. And to have them in-house and to be very nimble and flexible are very important. Um, I think in-house content, what we're finding, and you know, everything is measured. You can measure everything now. Um, so we know that the things that, the things that sell, the content that sells, are um, events and festivals, food. Food is huge, and everybody eats no matter who they are. Um, and, so it's, and it's seasonal events. So you see on, on the Instagram things we pulled from the recent, the fall foliage and... Uh, festivals coming up, so whenever we do roundups like best pizza places, best places to get a cheesesteak, the number one story on the web was the best cheesesteak places in Philadelphia, believe it or not. And um, so it's, it's really events, festivals, seasonal activities, and food. It's all designed to tell people what to do now. So that's the thing. They want, they're looking for what to do, and we're our source for that. So. Many of our um, attractions tell us we're the number one referrer to their sites. It's very important for us. We're not the destination. We're the way to get there. So we also track, whether it's for the Barnes Foundation, Franklin Institute, uh, Stephen Star Restaurants, how many of their referrals came from either visitphilly.com or you wish you knew. That's very important to us because our goal is to send people forth not to have them stop with us. Uh, we have a couple of questions on Instagram uh, here. Uh, do you pay for your influencers on Instagram when they do their takeovers? And yeah. somebody's asking a question about why you don't credit the photographs. Um, well, on the, credits, the photographs are credited on the, in the copy. Um, and when we have an Instagram takeover, a lot of our Instagram photos are based on takeovers, you know, the people that, the Instagrammers that take it over for a week. And we do a whole promotional, uh, uh, visual graphic our creative services department puts together for us that talks about this person and it does a little introduction and then we run we run their photos during the week but um, we feel that the um, that the copy credit is is good enough and the photos are so beautiful we don't want to put it in the photo um, we don't want to we don't it's not our photo so we really don't want to you know do something to it by putting you know the credit right there so I will bring that question back to our social team and we'll see what they have okay. to say too. And, and how about uh, paying influencers not not just Instagrammers but uh, would you pay for um, we, bloggers we, to, to visit that sort of thing no yeah. we, we actually pay um, a small stipend for the guest Instagrammers um, but we don't we, we're not paying influencers a lot of money to come into Philadelphia and cover Philadelphia we have found that we don't necessarily need to do that. Um, we, we tried it about two years ago. We tried to work with um, very, very influential bloggers on the kind of mommy blogger space. And because their, because their sites are not travel specific, it was just a blip. They don't, cover the, they don't cover our destination on a regular basis. So we pretty much stick with the travel related uh, ones and, and are at this moment um, not paying for 
influencers. Um, I was going to ask you, obviously we've, we've heard the news overnight of, about uh, President Trump and uh, you know, the this may um, make your job more challenging obviously to get uh, um, tourists to come into the country, not necessarily domestic tourists but um, from overseas. Uh, um, uh, do you see social media and digital helping you do that? Um, and are you going to do things in different languages, for example? I mean, I don't know if you do it already in Spanish, for example, right. but also Chinese, for example. Right. Um, our partners in tourism for Philadelphia is the, the Philadelphia Convention and Visitors Bureau, and I, I think someone might be here from there. Alethea, she's right there raving her hand. Um, the, the CVB actually um, covers the overseas market. We do Canada, North America, I mean North America and Mexico. Um, and they do all the other countries overseas. So they have on their website um, languages. And we have on our, we have a, a Spanish uh, social media channel, but pretty much everything is in English right now. Mm -hmm. and I, th I find it really interesting your, your slide there on uh, Facebook on organic versus paid reach. I mean, do you see it going more towards that model that it is a, a paid market to, to be in, not just on Facebook, well, but social media? The reason generally? we did that is because we found in just in one year, because the algorithm had changed on Facebook, um, we used to say we wanted to grow our followers. And that was the reason, that was our, that was our strategy. But now we know that uh, Facebook, every post we put out will only get about a third to a half, will only reach a third and a half of our followers. Um, and so to reach the other half and to, to grow our engagement on Facebook, we have to actually pay for the post. But we can also target so finely to people that we think really would enjoy a trip to Philadelphia. So we, yeah, we, it's here to stay. Yeah, we just have time for one more question. Yeah. It's about um, how you would get started. I know you were saying you were chasing follower numbers, perhaps, uh, maybe at the start, but how, how did you actually start off in social media? So was it, your, it was 2007, yeah. and um, I actually was at uh, Visit Philly, and I, you know, we started, search engine optimization was, was out, was starting, um, uh, RSS feeds, remember that, RSS feeds? So we thought, well, there's something here. So we, we, we got a consultant to come in and kind of give us the state of the art, and they trained our whole team and our, you know, and our executive committee. And from there we started, and it just, it was so perfect for our overall culture within Visit Philly, because we were a content culture to begin with. So shooting pictures, we have two full-time uh, photographers on staff and a lot of freelancers. We use a lot of freelance photography, and it just was perfect for us. Great. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm afraid uh, we're out of uh, time there. We've got a flashing red clock in front of us Whoa. that's telling us that. So thank you, everybody, thank for your you. questions today. So and I'm sure um, Paula and Meryl would be able to take some uh, personally sure. if you had some individual sure. questions. But I just wanted to say thank you, thank you so much for coming over, Meryl uh, and you. Paula. And uh, we may be able to look into political asylum for you if you don't want to go back. We're ready. <laughs> <Thank you. laughs>